Hey, I'm Conrad Nodden. And I'm Rafael Valle. And from Nashville, Tennessee, you're listening to The Horse and Friends Radio Show. Of the horse, for the horse, and by the horse lovers everywhere. Wow, Raphael, show number 10. Big show. We've enjoyed nine previous shows with great guests. And I can't believe we, we've had such fantastic guests, and the shows have really gotten such a great response. Yeah, no, the guest, I mean, you can't get any better than that. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, we can't say what we're working on, but <laughs> boy, it, it's only going to keep getting better and as equal level of the caliber of guests. Yeah. So uh, we're really excited how much this uh, this show has expanded into the heart and depth into the equine world. And again, thanks for everybody's support and uh, because it is the you the listeners and fans and that make this show possible and Mm -hmm. successful yep and this is show number 10 as we said and normally we say well who's on this show we're going to wait till we get him on the line because he's very special guest and we're really looking forward to it uh all the t-shirts have been won all five uh that's really great thanks for hitting the like button and everyone who entered uh, we really appreciate that and by the way, some have said, uh, well, you know, can I at least get a T-shirt somewhere? What could they do if they wanted to uh, get it? Yeah, you could go to Ivory Pal's uh, website, which is www.ivorynoelranch.com, and you could go to the store link, and there you could see the T-shirts. Uh, you know, uh, you could buy them, and, and, and we'll personally uh, mail them to you. Okay. Now, also, we still have some great sponsors, and uh, let's hear from them now. This is Raphael, and I'm proud to say that we have been using Omega Horse Shine on Ivory Pal and all of our horses since 2002. Omega Horse Shine is made from stabilized whole ground flaxseed, is high in Omega 3, and is all natural with no artificial preservatives. Omega Horse Shine gives Ivory Pal a strong immune system, that shiny golden coat, and strong hooves that enables him to be barefoot and maintain his peak performance. Ivory Pal loves Omega Horse Shine so much that he is the ambassador for this great product and his pictures are on the Omega Horseshine bag. Omega Horseshine was named Product of the Year and Best in Nutrition by Horse Journal. Omega Horseshine is available at quality feed and tax stores nationwide. To order online or find a dealer near you, please visit www.omegafields.com. Hi, this is Raphael for the Holistic Horse Products, a family-owned business. Recent scientific studies indicate that the traditional and chemical methods for deworming are harmful to horses as the worms and parasites build up an immunity to these chemical products. Let me share with you an effective 100% natural deworming product that I have been using on Ivory Pal and my other horses successfully for the last three years. It is Omni Worm Guard Plus with immune boost and probiotics by the Holistic Horse, the gold standard of all natural dewormers. It provides a natural, non-chemical warmer with food-grade PermaGuard fossil shell flour. This keeps Ivory Pal warm-free on a consistent basis, but also contains immune boost to help him build a good immune system to assist in warding off disease. In addition to this, it contains five very powerful and very necessary probiotics to keep Ivory Pal's digestive system in balance. To keep your horse healthy, Purchase Omni Warm Guard Plus with Immune Boost and Probiotics. Please visit www.theholistichorse.com or call 1-877-774-0594. When your best horse needs the very best video. When your farm needs to look absolutely fabulous. When your special event needs multi-camera, professional coverage, when you need a theme-based movie, and of course, special effects, then you need Malibu Video Productions, now in Nashville. Okay, Raphael, uh, do you like cowboy and western music? Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Well... 
On the line, we have a man who bears one of the most famous country family names of all time, a man who in his own right, uh, a Western Music Artist of the Year winner himself, we have Mr. Roy Rogers Jr. And welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Uh, it's good to be with you, Conrad. Thank you for uh, for calling me. I guess uh, your family called you Dusty. Is it okay if we do that? Sure. Everybody calls me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, not to be confused with Dustin. Can you tell us who he is? Well, Dustin is my son. Uh, that's a name I was supposed to have when I was born. Dad was going to call me Dustin Roy and then changed his mind last minute and called me Roy Jr. So I gave Dustin the name I, the dad was going to give me. So hey. so when you call Roy around our house, everybody came around. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you just had to wait one generation, right, to get the name. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, we, we want to talk about you for a little bit. Of course, I know that you uh, don't mind and like to talk, too, uh, about your dad. And we sure. can do that. But uh-huh. I'd like to talk a little about uh, Roy Rogers Jr. and the High Riders. Tell us uh-huh. what's going on with that. Well, that's that's a band I have put together way back. Uh, I, I'm probably 40 years ago. I put the band, the High Riders, together, and uh, and I've had them ever since. Of course, band members have changed in and out a little bit, but uh, it's still a great group of guys. And we do uh, uh, just like what you said. We uh, we we play Western music. We play cowboy music. All day I face barren waste without the taste of water. Spreads the burning sand with water. water. Damn, can't you see that big green tree where the water's running free and it's waiting there for me and you? understand conrad you worked with uh, with uh, one of the great uh, cowboy singers as far as i was concerned uh, with marty robbins and uh, I, I grew up cutting my teeth listening to that man <laughs> and that's what i probably got me really into it with that i mean with the, of course i grew up with the sons of the pioneers they were at our house all the time working and uh, i just really enjoyed the music always have and uh, and of course, you know, at one time I had to play a little bit of country to to, to find a job. But uh, <laughs> anymore, <laughs> I just love playing the old cowboy music. There just isn't very many people out there doing it anymore, and it's kind of a shame. But we do uh, we do uh, shows here in Branson five days a week. We have a morning show. We do at Vicky Gillies Theater here uh, up through uh, you know up about midway point of de- December, and then we're all off for the, for for the for the holiday season. But uh, we start our Christmas shows here on November first, and uh, and. Uh, We'd like I say we do five days a week, Monday through Friday, and huh. then that gives us the weekend to jump out of here. And what with Dad's 100th birthday this year, we're out on the road doing a lot of road dates right now too. So it works out really well for us. But uh, we do cowboy music. That's what that's our job. Yeah, Marty uh, was a very uh, great guy to work with. He's a great writer. I worked with him for the last four years of his life, and he actually uh, recorded one of my songs too. But the, yeah, so we love uh, we love kind of, you know. Speaking of cowboy songs, uh, right before this show. Actually, two shows back, uh, Don Edwards. I'm sure you know of him. Oh, I know Don. Yeah, I know yeah. Don very well. He's a great guy. Yeah, and a, a very uh, keeping the country uh, cowboy stuff going, and we love that. Mm-hmm. And uh, for one thing for our listeners, does uh, Branson and is Branson, Missouri? So if you're in Branson, Missouri, stop by and you can listen to uh, yeah, I Dusty to here. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's how I am. You know, sometimes thanks for, I, uh, thanks, thanks for checking up on me, Rafael. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> hey, I just want to make sure that people get an opportunity yeah. to see you live. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Yeah, now, we're here in Branson. Been yeah. here nine years now. Oh, now, great. speaking of that, is the Roy Rogers and Dale Evans Museum uh, there too? It was here up until about 2009, and then we had to kind of close it down. People kind of quit coming, and our rent was so high on the building we couldn't couldn't afford to keep it open anymore. And of course, my dad always said, "Son, there's going to come a time when." you're not going to be able to keep that museum open and you're going to have to let it go. And so yeah. we had to finally close it down and it, you know, kind of broke our hearts a little bit, but we got her, we got her closed down and, uh, 
but uh, you know, not something we wanted to do. But hey, you know, as we're, our family is no different than anybody else's. You know, you get to a point where you, you know, your parents pass away, you have to go to their house, and you have to take care of business and close things down. And and uh, it wasn't it wasn't a happy thing. But you know, it's done now, and so now we can move on. Now, didn't that start uh, what in 1976 in Victorville, California? Wasn't that the in beginning? 1967. So yeah. 67. Okay. Yeah, it started 67 in Apple Valley, California, and then it moved to Victorville for a while, and then. I was there for quite a few years, and then we moved it back here uh, to Branson in uh, in '03, and we cl- had to close it up finally in '09. Mm-hmm. I think Dad's fans just getting older, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, know. yeah, but Trigger always will be uh, your dad, and uh, oh, yeah. Trigger will always rem- be remembered. Well, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Trigger fan. Uh, I have sure. a Palomino myself, Palomino Stanley, and uh, Tennessee Walker. So I've always had a partial favoritism. Yeah, well, Trigger to- Junior, Tr- Trigger Junior was a Tennessee Walker. Um, and he's of uh, dad's, and then, and he's the one that did all the dance routines, you know, on state fairs and rodeos yeah. years ago. Mm-hmm. A great horse and trigger. He was uh, he was half uh, half thoroughbred and half Palomino, but uh, yeah, dad would always say if you ask him, you know, what he owes his success to, he'd always say, well, if it wasn't for trigger, there'd be no Roy Rogers. So. Um, yeah. He and he and Trigger had a terrific bond. They really did. Uh, Dusty, tell us about Leonard Franklin Sly. <laughs> yeah, that's laughs. quite a name, isn't it? And, and D- Dale's name was Francis Octavia Smith. So <laughs> I think her mom had a sense of humor too. But you know, that's that's the old time names from years and years ago. And of course, Dad was born Leonard Franklin Sly. And of course, his, his grandma, my or his mother, my grandma, called him Lenny or Len. And, <laughs> and, and, and even after he became famous as Roy Rogers, she would never call him anything but Len. Yeah. But um, you know, he, that's the name his mama gave him, and. Uh, and uh, he changed it legally in 1942, uh, before I before I was born. Otherwise, y'all be sitting here talking to Lenny Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so I dodged a bullet on that. But, yeah. yeah, that was Dad, and he he was born in Ohio, born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and and this year, November the fifth of this year, Dad would have been 100. Wow. Years old, and that's that's the reason why we're out yeah. doing so many road shows. And, in fact, we're going to be in his hometown of Apple Valley, California, on Dad's birthday, which is November the fifth. Uh, and uh, we'll be dad, dad's hometown out in California. They lived there 35 years. We're doing a, a big concert out there for for the folks around that area because that's where mom and dad are buried, and that's where the outside trigger, the big fiberglass one, is uh, up there where where dad and mom are buried. So we're going to go out and do a concert there. So it should be should be a lot of fun. F- uh, finish this quote for me, if you would, Dusty. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not my job to stand in my father's shadow. <laughs> Yeah, my my job is not to stand in his shadow. My job is to lengthen it. Exactly. <laughs> what a, what a, that's a great quote. Yeah, that's a great quote. Yeah, that's yeah, a really yeah. nice thought. Well, too. you certainly have done him proud, and uh, I'm sure he's, well, he's I, smiling I, you down know, on I, you. I, I owe him an awful lot. He just—he wasn't only my father, but he was, he was a mentor and a and a and, a, and uh, I looked up to him a lot. And and of course, you know, we didn't see him a whole lot. We were, you know, as kids, there were nine kids in the family, and mom and dad were working constantly. I mean, they were on the road, or they were, or you know, sometimes yeah. twenty-nine to thirty days out of a, a month, and. Uh, you, you know, sweetie is, but I, I I learned a lot of things from from Roy and Dale just watching them from a distance, and I could watch Dad and just see how he handled people and how how well he treated kids and things like that. And you can learn a lot by by observing, and I certainly did with him. Can we uh, talk just briefly about uh, the family because it's got sure. quite a history? Uh, mm-hmm. Now I know you're came you're carrying on the family tradition. Uh, we, right. we know Hank Williams Jr. has a song, Family Tradition. He's carrying on a family tradition. Not quite like yours, but, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but uh, actually your family, and maybe uh, a lot of our listeners don't realize, you're, you've had a fair amount of tragedies, uh, starting off with your mom was not Dale, but Arlene, if I understand that, and she right. died about a week after you were born? Yeah, about eight days after I was born, uh, I, I, she, she, I was born by cesarean section in 1946 in, uh, in October, and uh, she got an embolism in her system, which is an air bubble that'll cause a blood clot to form sometime. And of course, in the 40s, you know, there's no way of detecting blood clots in those days, and they didn't get the ladies up and walk around like they do today to help dissolve these clots that might be their way. So this one just sat dormant in her system for for those uh, seven days on the eighth day when she became more active. So did the clot. It moved through her system, and it reached her heart and lungs and stopped her heart when I was mm-hmm. only a few days old. So I never got to know 
my natural mother. But that started a, a long line of tragedies for the family. And, and then Debbie, and, uh, your half-sister, yeah. 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, we lost Debbie in 1964 in a church bus accident uh, down near Oceanside, California. And then the following year, 1965, on my mother's birthday, October the 31st, my brother Sandy, uh, the adopted brother, he uh, choked to death in the service while being stationed with the Army, mm. Army in Germany. So, you know, it's been one thing after another. And, of course, you know, there was only... There was a little girl that was born between Roy and Dale, the only child that was really between those two, and uh, little Robin Elizabeth. And Robin was born in 1950, and Robin had Down syndrome. And um, they didn't know what caused Downs in those days. They thought it might be an RH blood factor problem. One was positive, one negative, but they didn't know. But they lost Robin just before her second birthday yeah. due to complications of pneumonia. And that's when Mom wrote her very first book, uh, Angel Unaware. But, you know, they've had more than their share of tragedy. And, uh, but, you know, they've always had that good, good, good faith in the good Lord, and uh, he's always... Uh, He's always uh, helped them through it, so all of us, have, uh, you know, he's helped all of us through it. So, uh, you know, we owe all the praise and glory to him to be able to bring us through all that. Oh, no doubt, and you know, it shows you what kind of family you are strong because, you know, you have so much to give to people and the fans that you know, most people wouldn't know you had been through, you know, so much family tragedy. Well, you know, so. the, 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 it's very, t it's very, t you know, we're not, we weren't unique in that case. I mean, there's a lot of families out there that are struck by tragedy in one right. way or the other. And I can't, I, you know, I mean, without having family or a belief in God somewhere along the line, I don't know how people handle it. I really don't. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so you have to have a belief in, in somebody bigger than you, or you got to have some family that's really close to you that can help you through. Oh, there's no doubt about it. That. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, tell us about, and the friends will say what? Tell us about <laughs> Golden Cloud. Golden Cloud, yeah, everybody, uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, Golden Cloud was, uh, uh, was uh, Trigger's original name. Yeah. That's what he was, you know, when he, would, when, he, uh, when he was full, that's what they called him. They called him uh, Golden Cloud. He, he remained that way for a while because he, he started, uh, he was owned by a company called Hudkin Stables out there, and they, he was used in, uh, in uh, Errol Flynn's 1933, I think, version of uh, of uh, Robin Hood and uh, and Olivia de Havilland, who played Maid Marian in that movie, rode Trigger in Sherwood Forest. So that was one of his first movie movie debuts. Was in uh, in a movie with Errol Flynn and and, and Olivia de Havilland in that early uh, Robin Hood series. And then uh, when they brought him out to the stables for Dad to see him, they brought him from the stables out to the uh, to the to the set movie set. Uh, Trigger was the third one, third horse Dad ever got on, and he said, "Man, when I got on him, he and I and I spurred him on. He went to the end of the street and turned on a dime and gave me nine cents change. <laughs> this is the this is the horse I got to have." So, that was uh, a thoroughbred breeding in him. Huh? He had a little was. bit of thoroughbred. Yeah. Uh, it really was. I mean, he was he was and he, he would. The thing, a great thing about Trigger is he took uh, he took the best of both breeds he took the he took the stamina of the quarter horse but he took that beautiful lines and flair from from, from the thoroughbred right. and it was just uh just really great uh, great horse all the way around wasn't it uh wasn't it your dad's partner smiley Burnett, that said well that horse turned pretty quick on the trigger and your dad <laughs> yeah, said yeah i like that yeah. the trigger yeah, he was the one he was the one that was on the set uh dad's sidekick in, in, in his early movies he was a uh, was Dad's sidekick in Dad's very first movie called Under Western Stars? And when they tried out uh, Golden Cloud, uh, Smiley saw him saw him ride uh, Dad ride him and saw him make that turn. And he said, "Wow." He said, that horse is pretty quick on the trigger, isn't he, Roy? So that's says, I think that's what I'm going to call him, trigger. So now, that's where it came from. Now, how did uh, y'all get the second trigger, the Tennessee Walker? The Tennessee Walker, Dad was doing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, personal appearances, and, and it was, it, the, the, tra the traveling on, on trigger was, was tough. He was not mm. only working in the movies and doing the television series, um, he would have to travel, and he didn't travel all that well because I mean, the poor guy was about wore out. <laughs> from doing all of those. So Dad said, I need to get another horse that I can take with me uh, out on, on the State Fair and Rodeo Circuit. And so Dad went to Fisher's Palomino Farm up in, in Pennsylvania and saw uh, the, the horse. His name was Golden Zephyr. And Dad says, man, he's beautiful. i, I got to have that horse. And so they had him trained to do all of these different dances and stuff, and Dad took him on the road because he traveled so well in, in the trailers. So. Right. That's where he came from, and boy, I tell you, the kids just loved him. He was just the most beautiful horse. 
<clears throat> now, didn't so, uh, he was a little more? He was a little bit darker gold than Trigger, and he had a long, beautiful, long mane and tail, just beautiful. Yeah. Didn't the uh, the original Trigger? Uh, weren't, when you were a kid, weren't you playing on him and under him oh, sure. and around him? And he was just oh, really sure. good natured, huh? Yeah. Oh, well, you know that's that's the one thing Dad said. Had him, you know, he says I've got to have a horse that I can ride that looks good, and 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 that there was color film coming on. Uh, he heard that there was color film coming on, so he thought, you know, I need a horse something other than black and white, and that's where one of the reasons why he picked Trigger. But Trigger also was just so good around kids. I mean, all of us kids, you know, we'd hang on his tail and walk underneath him all the time <laughs> and around him, make all kinds of racket and jump on him, and he just was just steady as a rock. He just stood completely still and. He knew that uh, you know somebody he might hurt somebody if he kicked or or stepped on their foot. So he you know he was very cautious about that, which amazed me. I mean to be around kids all the time like that. Of course, you know how kids are; they want to pull a hair out of his tail or something <laughs> like that, and that, that got to be a problem. But uh, but other than that, he was just an absolute uh, an amazing horse. That dad could get him. T- uh, he was house, you know, house broken. You could, he could take him into the lobbies. He could take him into hotel lobbies. He took him into hospitals to see kids. Oh wow! And he would never, he would never have an accident anywhere inside any of those buildings. So. You know, that's uh, kind of like Raphael's uh, horse, Ivory Pal. People get attached to a horse, and they, they, you know, personalize it. Ivory Pal has thirty thousand fans on his Facebook page, and oh, yeah. uh, Raphael has much less than that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm well, just... I'm sure you know. I, I'm sure it would be the same way today if Dad if Dad Trigger yeah. on Facebook. It would be the same way. The little girls just love Trigger. Yeah, I mean, now, they, they and, just yeah. love that horse. And yeah. I'm smiling because what you you're t- telling our listeners that your dad did it with him, bring him to the buildings and stuff and everything. That's what sure. we do with Ivory Power, bring him into the house. <laughs> and oh, uh, he, yeah, yeah they, they have they have a sense of with little children or special needs kids because we did a lot of oh, that's, charity that's work terrific. for Yeah, so it's kind of uh, interesting. And he is a Palomino too. Uh, sure. Walker. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, you know, kids are, kids, you know, the kids will go to a horse where they'll go to a human. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They, you know, they just, they just love, they just, and you know, they see a horse and I'm at it immediately. They get excited and, and run right up there, you know, and that's the one great thing. You've got to have a horse that, yeah. that has a tolerance level with some. No that, doubt you know? about it. Hey, yeah. didn't your dad have another horse? Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Trigero? Trigero, yeah. That was his racehorse. That yeah. was a thoroughbred. Oh, wow. And he won 13 career wins, I guess, and well, yeah. uh, at yeah. Santa Anita Park, California. Dad thought, he, that dad thought he, he would really like to get into the racing game, which he did for a while. And, he, you know, he did okay at it. But it, he said, you know, the racehorses, you know, those doggone thoroughbreds, all they're doing is looking for, they're like an accident, looking for a place to happen Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when they're young. And he, he, kept trying to, he kept trying to get another trigger. He bred, you know, quarter horses and different things to a beautiful golden stallion horse named thunder and he kept trying to get another trigger and of course he ended up with a whole stable full of horses but no <laughs> no trigger no triggers well, so. i guess uh trigger was a once in a lifetime uh, horse for he, him he right? really yeah. he absolutely yeah. was and uh and and just a joy to be around and i, I tell you when my dad lost him when uh, he he lost him in 1965 he went you know, on around july the 4th or 5th somewhere in there he um uh, he, they just turned him out. He was 33 years old. They just turned mm-hmm. him out in the paddock, let him run around a little bit. Well, he just he rolled. He got down and rolled like he always did. You know, from his back to the side, back to side, back to side, and then uh, he just kind of went over on his side and and uh, he, he just stopped moving, stopped breathing. Is like, I think he just had a bad. His heart just stopped. Wow. Yeah, at that age, right? And, yeah, and you yeah. know something interesting that. Your dad was way ahead of his time as far as the relationship with the horse, you know. Back then, they were kind of a means to an end, just showed him in movies and so forth. But you could tell that your dad and obviously your whole family had a great love and respect uh, for the horses and that relationship. I think it's probably what the the magic that came through the screen and the shows Mm -hmm. is that connection that he had with Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like the, it's like the the same connection that Roy and Dale had. You know, Dad had a lot of leading ladies that he worked with, but there was never the spark. Or the or or the on screen chemistry that there was between Dad and Dale, right? And it was the same with a horse. You know, you can uh, you can ride a horse, yeah, and you can make him chase and do different things. But when you have a horse has a personality that's bigger than life, mm-hmm. you know, you need to expand upon that and make it and make it part of uh, of his personality as part as yours. And my dad, I mean, he could just think of what he wanted done, and Trigger would know what he wants and wow. get it done. 
it, it was just an amazing, an amazing thing. And of course, you know, when you're with a dad, had trigger for for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you get really attached, and and it's like one, like one trigger when he lost him, it was like losing one of his kids. I yeah. mean, all of all of us kids at home, we didn't even know Trigger passed away for a year. Wow. He had him out at another ranch out in Thousand Oaks, California, and we didn't know he was gone. Dad couldn't he couldn't bring himself to tell us kids that yeah. Trigger was gone. That's how mm. much he just he wow. loved that horse. And of course, he had him beautifully mounted and and put in the museum, and people got on him all the time. You know, hey, I'll, really? You know, and just, yeah, I'm riding and Trigger. And, <laughs> and Dad, you know, and and and. and Dad said, look, what do you want me to do? Throw him in the ground, let the worms eat him up? Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to do that. He was my partner for 30 years. You just don't do that. Yeah, well. and, he, and he had seen what a beautiful job they do on taxidermy anyway, and so he had him beautifully mounted. And, of course, you know, people, that was the joke, you know, for years. You know, well, Roy, you know, he had he had uh, Trigger mounted, then he had Trigger Jr. mounted, then he had Buttermilk mounted, and he had Bullet mounted, and and, and now Dale, she sleeps with one eye open. <laughs> 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 That's too funny. Uh, you know, my dad always says, look, he says, he says, after I'm gone, when I leave this earth and he says, I go to be with the good Lord, he said, you could just take what's left of me and mount it up, put it on trigger. I'd be happy to. Yeah. Do it. But now, I told him, Dad, there's laws against that. We can't do it. But he would have loved it. Uh, you mentioned buttermilk. That was Dale's horse, wasn't it? Yes. Uh-huh. And then yes. Uh, Bullet. He was, uh, he, was, he was a buckskin. Uh-huh. And, tr- and Bullet was a uh, Bullet was the dog. The dog, the yeah. Shepherd, yeah. Yeah. Well, tell yeah. us about the acronym F A. M-E. Families advocating moral entertainment. Yeah, I think times are different now than yeah. when your dad was doing that wholesome entertainment. And and you know what's great, and we appreciate it too, you're following that tradition as well. You're doing wholesome songs to wholesome audiences and, and keep sure. it up, Dusty. It's That's a very important thing well, today. It's, it's, you know, there's so many things that have disappeared uh, in our lifetime. You know, I'm, I mean, this year in October, I'm in a, I will be 65. It's hard to believe. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the truth. Yeah, and and so many things that I remember that that had value uh, was the family unit and and how close families were. And we, you know, that you you were at home at five and you sat and had dinner and you talked about your day and you know all of us around the table and all of those things now because of the of communications and everything else are so crazy these days that a lot of those things that were time honored to me have disappeared and i've tried to get them to, you know into my own kids and great mm-hmm. and my grandkids and and so it's important that that we don't completely throw away our past and and those of us who do western music um and Marty loved Western music. I know Marty uh, Marty uh, Robbins did, and 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 he used to sing with you know love the Pioneer Sound. And, yeah, and and they've you know they've remained popular. That that Western music has remained popular for seventy five, eighty years. You know, it's just an unbelievable you know genre of music. Well, it's and, real, and, isn't it? It's, yeah, it talks about and, and real the, things. Heart and soul of America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had I had people today come come to show, come to the show and just loved it and just said, oh mm-hmm. man. I, I heard songs that I, I have not heard in years, and it was just so good to hear them again. So we're trying to keep it up long as we can. No, and you do a good job at it because uh, the, some of the songs on the radio, I was like, I mean, I don't even know if you call that music. You know, it's, uh, I just turn it off because it's so disturbing. I, I think, you know, if you're given a God given talent to sing and perform, make it enriching, you know, make it a, 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 a great message, not about, you know, singing about negative stuff or, or degrading other people. Well, we have but, enough. Of, yeah. Yeah, I we agree have, with we, you. Raphael, we have enough of that. I mean, you know, our kids are bombarded with that stuff. Kids kids can't even be teenagers anymore. They, I mean, uh, uh, kids anymore. By seven years old, they got to be a teenager. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't give them a chance to be kids, and, and that's a shame, you know, that when we grew up, I mean, we, we played cowboys and Indians, and we, you know, we had a stick horse, and we, mm-hmm. you know, but anymore, and I, of course, you know, the kids are, you know, if they listen to the show, they're going to say, oh, well, that's old hat, that's old time. But it meant something to us. And, Absolutely. And we, and we try to pass it on yes. as much as we can. And, you know, my, and, and, and just like, see, maybe I'm trying to lengthen my dad's shadow. It's because I owe him, and I, and I uh, you know, everything I am today, I owe to, to my parents and, and the way they raised me. I could have gone in any direction, mm-hmm. but... I've tried to keep going straight because that's what they wanted me to do, and that's what they taught me. Well, we're now, sure glad you, you know, did because yeah. people yeah. are benefiting it, uh, from it to this day. Yeah. Uh, well, tell us about Happy Trails. That's probably one of the most uh, known songs among cowboys and equine people. Uh, it is. It is. Amazing. And, you know, I, I, it, my mom wrote that. My dad mm-hmm. had a radio show in the 40s and 50s. 
the Roy Rogers Show. And they, and after he married Dale in 1947, they, they, a couple of years they were together doing the radio show, and, and Mom said, Roy, you know, I, this Smiles are made out of the sunshine song that you sing for your theme song is okay, but you're a cowboy. You need a trail song, man. So she sat down, and within about a half hour, she wrote out the words and the, uh, uh, and, and the tune to Happy Trails. Mm. She taught it to the Sons of the Pioneers that afternoon, and they did it on the radio that night, and it was become... <laughs> Wow. Their theme song. Yeah. I don't. Know, I can't tell you. How over four hundred different artists have recorded it. Yeah. It's been. It and two years ago it went into the Grammy Hall of Fame. So wow. yeah, it is you a know, it shows song. you what you can do in in a half hour. <laughs> yeah. And you you sing it during your show, I suppose. Oh, oh, absolutely! Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, we can. With you know, we do cool water tumbling tumbleweeds and <laughs> and and, <laughs> and happy trails. If we don't do that, we get booed off the stage. So. <laughs> Everybody's waiting for those two songs. Huh? Yeah, oh, that absolutely. One. Now uh, you know. Um, do you have a, a website where their fans could go we and do. see we us? Got, for... uh, we got two different ones. We got uh, www.royrogersjuniorshow.com. That'll get you. To, okay. You know what our schedule mm-hmm. is here and on our travel schedule and. And our music and, you know, all that kind of thing. And then mom and dad have their own website, which is www.royrogers.com. So there's two different ones. If, they, if they're interested in any Roy Rogers memorabilia or anything like that, that's, they go to the Roy Rogers site. And if they're interested in anything of what we're doing as far as our show schedule and, and CDs and things, they just need to go to Roy Rogers Jr. Show.com. So Excellent. Great. Dusty, thank you so much uh, for sharing all this information, uh, you know, passing on the family tradition the way you are, the wholesome songs, the bygone era that you're still keeping alive yeah. in the hearts of many people that truly appreciate the value of it. Keep up the good work, and uh, we, we really thank you. And all our listeners, of course, are going to love this show. They're going to love uh, hearing about you and about Trigger and everything else. So thanks again for being with well, us thank today. Thank you all. Well, you know, you know, we're going to be out and around, the High Riders and I and my son Dustin. So you know, if you hear of us coming into your area, come see us. We'd love to have you. Come and see the show. I'm sure it'll be a great show, and I encourage yeah, it. I hope I hope you get to see it. it. <laughs> Rafael and Conrad, thank you guys so much. And, okay, and, and uh, God bless and happy trails to you. Oh, same to you. We're, That's it. Thank we're you. glad you said that. Yeah. Happy trails to you until. Trails to you Keep smiling until then Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails to you Till we meet again Some Wow, what an interview. Uh, Roy Rogers Jr., also known as Dusty. We found out all about that. What a great guy, huh? Yeah, just, you sense, uh, just real down to earth. I mean, I think uh, you know, his dad, uh, uh, Roy Rogers, would definitely mm-hmm. be proud of him expanding his shadow because he definitely is down to earth, good you know, values, and represents the good of America. Indeed. Uh, you know, he mentioned something, too, uh, after uh, we got uh, done his call. He mentioned something uh, coming up uh, this next Rose Bowl oh, to yeah. commemorate 100 years of his dad. What did he say? Oh, about it's that? great. They're going to have a float with, uh, I guess, the, uh, the band the, and the, him. The band and mm-hmm. him, and they're going to be, uh, you know, have 100 
Palominos riding in honor wow. of uh, of um, uh, Roy Rogers hundredth anniversary. Yeah. So that'd be a great scene. A hundred Palominos. Maybe we could sneak out repelling there. <laughs> it's too far to travel to California, but yeah. that'll be funny. And uh, they're going to be singing Happy Trails. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you think Happy Trails, every horse rider and oh, owner, absolutely. you know, they just relate to that so much, yeah. don't they? Yeah. No, yeah. a great guy. I mean, uh, yeah, he and was. of course, you know, because that, uh, a yeah, sentimental uh, favorite, like all our other uh, guests, but mm-hmm. can't go wrong with somebody that no. was uh, related to or had the privilege to know and trigger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's nice to know his son, Dustin, yeah. is following in his footsteps, Absolutely. too. Three you know, generations. Yeah. He's singing on stage mm-hmm. with him and all. What a great show. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, really enjoyed uh, Outstanding. talking with uh, Roy Rogers Jr. But now, who is uh, on the next show? Someone really exciting. Yeah, we're really excited. Like all of our guests have been uh, special. And uh, this uh, individual, he's uh, has had a diverse career from being a bareback Bronco rider to uh, pre- making a presentation to Queen Elizabeth of England. And he's definitely one of the most widely known natural horse trainers, not only in the United States, but has a worldwide following, and it is Pat Pirelli. Wow. Yeah, we're really excited to have him on next show. Indeed. Really looking forward to that one. Well, there we have another show. That's big number 10. Uh, It's going really good. A lot of uh, very educational, informative, entertainment value to these shows. I think the friends are liking a lot. Yeah, and the most important thing is the common thread that they all have a love and respect for yeah. horses. Like, it's something I didn't even know about Roy Rogers Jr. here. I mentioned mm-hmm. during the show he was ahead of his time in that yeah. relationship he had with Trigger. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he was a, probably one of the first... Uh, mainstream natural horsemen and we didn't even call them natural horsemen back then yeah that's right Mm -hmm. interesting well there we have it uh, show number 10 and uh so glad that uh, we had the chance to interview him today no doubt so folks thanks for tuning in as they say and be sure to be watching for our next episode coming soon until then happy trails everybody hey Raphael, i bet you can't do this Horse and Friends Radio